So I'm going to start off by getting the obvious questions out of the way. Sadly, that bike is not mine. I'm sharing this garage space with the guy who owns this. That's a fine stick, isn't it? Maybe if I ask nicely enough, he'll let me have a go one day. Second, this is not a private garage. I don't own all of these bikes either. Unfortunately, we share the whole space, which is very common here in inner city areas in Germany. The chances of getting a single garage like I had before are very, very slim. Also, it's gloriously sunny outside, but I'm not out riding the bike. Why is that? Well, sadly the electricity doesn't work in here either, so I had to choose a really bright day to get this done in order for you to see what I'm doing. But anyway, let's get stuck in. This is the Smart Turn System, which is an automatic indicator cancelling system. The delightful fellows over at Smart Turn System contacted me and asked me if I'd like to fit one of these to my bike and see how it goes. So what do we get in the box? There's the instructions, which I'm not entirely ashamed to admit I'm actually going to have to use because this is a little bit more complicated than the booster plug and the gear indicator fitting was. We have the unit itself in a nice metal box, looks sturdily made with a whole bunch of connections on the end of it. As I said, this is a little bit more complicated than what we've had so far. Also got a Ziploc bag with another Ziploc bag inside it. Two more Ziploc bags inside it. Three more in fact. Obviously there's the obligatory sticker that'll be going on the pannier here somewhere later on. There's some little foam jobbies. They are vitally important, but we'll get to them in good time. Cable ties, because you always need cable ties. And then in here, a bunch of electrical connectors, both male, female, and this little sideways cable hijack affair. And that's it. Now the idea is, you slot this little butte somewhere in between the cable from the indicator switch and where it connects onto the indicator relay. And it uses some kind of clever doohickory wizardry inside there to tell the indicators to stop flashing when you have taken a left or right turn, done a roundabout, made a change of lane, or as well after a certain amount of time when you've just been flashing and doing nothing. Because remember kids, flashing without a reason is bad. So the first challenge is, we need to follow this cable out of the left hand switch gear, find out where the indicated wires connect onto the relay. So in the interest of speeding this up, let's miraculously have everything that we need removed. And there we have it. That was easy, wasn't it? With my nice body panel bumblebee over there. And on this bike, which is a 2007 versus 650, the connector we're looking for is this one just here. We pull back the rubber sheath, said the prostitute to the cautious vicar. We should get access to the cables we need. I think it's going to be easier to go over the top, which was the next conversation that the lady of the night and the man in the cloth had. There we go. That's our connector. Now the instructions that we get in the box are very simple indeed, but you can find more detailed instructions on the worldly wibbledy web. And these tell us that according to this handy table, I should have the right output should be grey. And there is a grey wire tucked in there in the middle. The flasher output should be orange. There's the orange one at the bottom. The left output green, the green one, and the inputs are all exactly the same colours. So what we need to do is to cut into these wires and put in connections which will allow us to jump these wires either side and interrupt the circuit between the switches and the flasher unit which is over there somewhere as far as I know. Now these colours and the position of this connector are going to be different depending on what bike you have so you're going to need to look into your own manuals forums, etc. to find out where you need to be looking. Before we get into hijacking wires here, more importantly, the device needs some power. It needs to have a switched power supply, which means that it's switched off when the bike is switched off, because the unit will actually drain a little bit of power. So if you leave your bike for a while with it on a permanently live connection, it will drain the battery after an undetermined period of time. So this other big connector under here, brown wire there, is the feed to the ignition. And the rest of them are to do with lighting, mostly. And the one we're after is this red one here, which is actually the feed to the side lights, which only come on, as I shall demonstrate, when you turn on the ignition. See? So when they're on, the device will be on. So that's perfect. So I'm going to hijack that cable there for my positive. And for this purpose, in the kit here, I have these little gadgets. No idea what they're called, but the idea is you crimp that over the cable, and then the back end of it provides you a connector for a spade to go into. Let's just do it, shall we? Clip onto the wire, making sure that the wire is in the slot there. Give it a squeeze with some pliers and it simultaneously cuts out a sheath of the cable, makes contact with the wire and then locks itself in place. Tidy. Then when we get to that point, the live feed for the device just plugs into the back end of that socket like that. But we'll leave that out for now. So that's the positive taken care of. Now we need to find a negative or a ground. Now what you 
can do for the ground is to connect the wire to any bare part of the frame, like maybe this bolt here, the bolt there that's holding this plastic fairing on, maybe even one of these little lugs here. But what I'm going to do, in the interests of tidiness, and so I don't have to chop off and re-terminate these cables, is I'm going to hijack this black wire here, which actually goes right back to the battery, because this is the positive and the negative for my heated grips. And it is, of course, important to remember when you're doing things like this, you need to be thinking about how much power things are drawing. And the instructions say that this beastie obviously uses 12 volts and 250 milliwatts of power consumption. So, some quick math. Point not two five amps, so I don't think we have really that much to worry about that this is going to be blowing any fuses. So I'm going to go on and hijack this black cable, just as with the other one. Cable in, line it up with the slots, a bit of squeeze with the pliers, cuts the housing, contacts the cable, gives us a connection. Lovely. So now what we need to do, coming back up to this connector, on this side, this is the side that leads up to the switch on the handlebar, we need to cut the left and the right indicator feeds and we need to cut the flasher relay feed. So remember from earlier on, that means we need to cut the grey, the orange and the green wire. Being careful to leave ourselves enough to work with, so I'm going to trim back this sheath a little bit just to make sure I'm not left short. So, there's the green wire. Cut that, right, that is irreversible. So just to check, that should now mean that the left indicator doesn't work. So I'm going to switch the bike on, try and indicate to the left. No left indicator. But the right indicator does still work. That is, until we cut the grey wire. Right indicator is dead as well. And last but not least, the flasher output is the orange one. Making sure actually to turn your ignition back off because you don't want to be short-circuiting anything when you've got naked wires flapping them out. Now what we need to do is put connectors on these ends so that we can connect the STS unit into it. So first off, we need to strip them back. Is it worth mentioning how hilariously suicidal it is that I'm actually colourblind, so I could be doing this all wrong? There's the blue one, there's the brown one, that's the red one. So this is getting a little bit more delicate. It's time to unsheathe the digits. So now we're going to attach our little electrical penises, electrical vaginas. In the past I've always done this with shit pliers or hair grips stolen from the girlfriend, but this time I've decided to grow up, get a proper set of crimps so that I don't have to do this again. Now give the wire a twist, bend over the end to thicken it up, poke it into the crimp, and then crimp it. That's the first electrical penis. And the reason I fold over the tips of the wires is because when they're inside the crimp, if you imagine, you shove the wire in straight and you try and pull it, it's just going to pull out. If you bend it over, when you try and pull it out, the wire will actually get thicker and resist coming out a bit more. It gives you a slightly stronger connection in your crimps. Now we will get the lady parts involved so that we can get this party started. Here we go. Three electrical penises, three electrical vaginas. Now obviously I would have preferred if this was created in a way that the booster plug was, whereby there's a plug and a wire already connected. So all you do is unplug the old connector, plug the booster plug in between, connect them all up again. I mean this is a lot more involved, but what this does at least mean is that if ever you want to reverse what you've done, you can just reconnect up these bullet connectors, like that, and your bike will be returned to normal as it was before. So now what we need to do, and I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be looking at the instructions for this because it seems quite complicated. It's to connect the blue wire to the flasher signal output. And it is at this rather disappointing and frustrating juncture that I realise that I've connected these the wrong way round. The electrical penises should be where the electrical vaginas are. That's annoying. But never mind, thanks to the wonders of video trickery, without a moment to waste, and as if by magic, we're back in business. We need to first connect the blue STS wire to the flasher signal output, which is the orange one. So that's that connected. Next is the yellow STS wire, which goes to the right indicator, which was the grey one. So that's them mated with each other, which means through a process of elimination, the last electrical penis has only one electrical vagina to go to is the left input. And then we also connect our power to the switched feed we found earlier on, and then our ground to the ground that we found earlier on. Then what we need to do before we connect the rest up is to turn on the ignition and the indicators should blink. So, ignition on, and the indicators blinked. So now 
connect the other cables up. The instructions don't tell us whether we should turn the ignition off before we connect the other cables up, but I'm going to assume that we should because I think connecting things up to a powered up bike is a bit silly. The white STS cable goes to the right indicator, which was the grey one. The brown STS wire goes to the flasher signal, which is the orange one. And the remaining one, once again by power of elimination, goes to the left indicator. So now I just need to tidy all this up a little bit, put all of that back inside this rubbery jib job, the connector back inside of its rubbery jib job, and then set it all back down where it was before we started messing around with it. So what I'm going to do is just try and tuck as much of this inside of this rubber sheath as possible and give it a wrap of tape just to try and keep things secure, tidy, so they don't get stray wires trapped by the fuel tank when I put it back on top. I would of course prefer to use black, but I can't find any black tape, so this will have to do. It's not my best work, but I've done worse. So now we need somewhere to put this, which is going to be difficult because there's not a lot of space anywhere now. The idea is that this has to be flat, has to be so that the STS is pointing upwards and the arrow has to be pointing in the direction of travel. Also, you can't put it on anything that's going to move like the handlebars, it has to be on a fixed part of the bike. So yeah, don't really know what to do. Could maybe go there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it on top of this frame bar and run a cable tie around this to hold it in place. Ah, no, nope. it's not going to work there. It's interfering with where the petrol tank wants to go. So back to the drawing board. I don't want to go too far forwards because then it'll interfere with the steering. Hmm, it is a conundrum. Let's get it out of the way, put the petrol tank on and then see where is left free, shall we? I think the extra connectors here are causing me some troubles. There we go, I've laid everything down a little bit more neatly there. Let's try again. And there we go, that is home. Just need to come back under here, pull the breather pipe back down out of the way, fuel line back on, fuel pump, fuel sender gauge, poke them back underneath out of the way, sit the tank down. Then we just need to quickly bolt the fuel tank back down. So now I can very quickly see that there is a lovely flat empty spot just here, which when we put the fairing back on will be nicely hidden and wide open inside there. But the question is, how do I fix that on there? What I'm gonna do is clean the top of that off, stick one of these little self-adhesive cable ties, sticky mounty thing that I just happen to have in my toolbox on there. In fact, I've got two, there's space for two, so let's go crazy and use two, shall we? Sadly, in my toolbox, I've got a choice of long, fat cable ties or short, thin cable ties. I'm going to have to double them up. But as already discussed, STS upwards, arrow pointing forwards, cable ties going tightwards. There we go, that is well and truly on there. Tuck the cable underneath there like that. Trim those off. Tidy. And then we need to move on to the next step, which is modifying the switch inside of the left control box, because at the moment it's latching. You click it, you need to switch it off to stop it indicating. We don't want that, we want the switch to go on and then to let go. So, that's what we go to next. In the interests of speed, let's have everything back on the bike. So, now we have our safer turn system unit fitted. We should have indicators which work. There's the left, there's the right, both flashing. But now we're faced with our next problem. The switch inside here is a latching switch. So when you switch it to the left, that switch is still switched to the left, even though it's gone back to the center and you need to press it to cancel it. The problem for us is, just because we fitted this clever little box in there, it can't switch off this mechanical switch. So what we need to do is modify this switch so that when you switch it to the left, it no longer latches and then goes back to center. And for that job, we've got these little spongy foam buttons, two different sizes to cover pretty much all different varieties of switch mechanism. And what we do is we put one of those little spongy things either side of the switch so that it can no longer latch itself open. So let's get on with it. Phillips screwdriver to get into this. Oh, those screws are really horrible. Corroded. Another fine example of Kawasaki's top quality fixings metal. So be prepared for this 
whole mechanism just to fall to pieces. If like me you've got an injection bike and there's no choke mechanism there's going to be a lot less springs and cables and things to fall out of here but if you do have a choke be careful because as soon as you open this up all of the stuff that's attached to that is going to jump for freedom. Pull that apart around my heated grips cables. I've made my life very difficult here with my various accessories. So there's the switch mechanism removed from the bar. I'm hoping you can see this is inside here. If I indicate to the left, this underpiece locks to the right. I push the button in, it goes back to the middle. If I indicate to the right, this underneath piece locks to the left. And then if I push the button in, it goes back to the middle. We need to stop that from happening. We need to make it so that when we go to the right, it then goes back to the middle on its own. You're supposed to put the sponge in between this moving part and the side walls, which on first inspection there's nowhere to do it on the verses here, but what you need to do is flip it all a and then if I do the same thing, if I indicate to one side, see this block moves and then stays there. If I push the button it goes back to the middle and the same. So we need to get our little spongy bobs into these gaps here, and it looks like by the size of these holes we're going to need to use the thinner ones. There they are. All they are is just tiny little foam discs. Slot that one in there, slot that one in there, and then just as a test, so you can hear the, the button switch, but that block doesn't stay where it is. It comes back to the middle all on its own. Let's have a little test with some indicatage. Now why is that not working? It would seem to me that those little foam jobbies are just a little bit too fat. They're stopping the indicator from actually engaging, and that's not really what we want. So I've pulled them out just to make sure I haven't broken the switch while I've been messing around. Yep, yeah, switch works fine still, so it's like those foam jobbies are too fat. So what I'm going to try to do to move this process along is to cut a sliver off of the larger foam button to make it smaller than the smaller foam button. It doesn't want to be cut. It's standing and I won't cut it. It's too bendy and floppy. Try something else. Let's see how scissors perform. Much better. There we go. Not exactly even, but it's a bit thinner than the other one. Bugger. Right, well, that one's gone somewhere. I've got plenty. I'll just do another one. There we go. There's our second thinner foam widget. See how they perform. Bung a foam jobby in there, bung a foam jobby in there. Try again. Unfortunately it's a bit erratic. It's just not working every time and that's not what you want from something which essentially tells people where you're gonna go to avoid them running over you. It's not working because now I made the rubber thinner, it's actually latched to the side, so I've got to release it to then indicate again. Okay, well, I've gone back to the original smaller spaces, so what are now the medium sized spaces. I think I'm just going to have to push the buttons with a little bit more force to get them to respond. And I would imagine, like with many pieces of foam, under pressure, eventually these will relax a little bit and I won't have to push it quite so hard. But we'll see how that goes over time. So, stick this back together. The blanking, <coughs> blanking plate for the choke mechanism, which my bike doesn't have. And then like that. <coughs> yep, a little bit of poo came out there. And before we do it tight, rotate it up to get your second screw in, otherwise clutch lever is most likely going to be in the way. Clamp the top one tight, make sure we're secure, yep. And that is that, smart turn system fitted to a Versus 650. Let's give it a quick test. So, indicates to the left. Now because we've modified the switch it doesn't latch, so if I push the button in the middle, nothing happens now. It continues to indicate. If I want to stop it indicating, I push it to the left again, and it stops. Alternatively, I can go from the left, straight over to the right, and it indicates to the right. And again, latch release doesn't work, so push it to the right, and now it's off again. So now what I need to do is get out on the bike, see if it works in real life. So just give me a minute to put my costume on, and I'll see you out there.